Cloning and masking along detailed edges like this in Photoshop is time consuming, complicated, and easy to get wrong, whether it's because of halos, poor selections, or some other problem that gets in the way. But what if there was a way to make results like this as easy as a single click? Well, in this video, we're going to explore two scenarios where a little bit of simple preparation can save you hours of endless frustration and change the way you mask and clone along detailed edges forever. So I'm gonna start out showing you the preparation step first because that's gonna be the hard part done and out of the way. And then we can start having fun with the stuff that it's gonna enable us to do. So the scenario is for this example that we want to mask this sky into this image. So we're putting the sky behind all of these detailed trees here that are on the top of this mountain. So the key to this technique is, like I said, this little bit of preparation we're gonna do first. So the first step is to grab our lasso tool and we're just going to sample or just select a section of this, just grabbing any kind of, you know, random section that contains that detail in it. We're going to copy that from the background layer. So command or control C. We're going to open a new empty image with command or control N. Click OK. And then we're going to paste command V or control V. Now from here, what we need to do is create a black and white high contrast version of this, uh, this little section that we've copied and pasted. So first let's just add a black and white adjustment layer, and then we'll add a levels adjustment and we're going to increase the contrast until that, like I said, that becomes a black and white kind of a, basically a silhouette of that edge. So now we've done that, we're just going to flatten the, uh, the layers here. So right click, and flatten image. Now from here, we're going to grab our rectangular marquee tool, select the whole thing, go edit and define brush preset. So you can give it a name, whatever name you want here. I'm just going to call it tree horizon YouTube. Click OK. Now, as we return back to the original image, you'll notice that the brush is uh, loaded with that tree horizon silhouette that we created in that previous step. So how do we actually mask this sky into this foreground? Well, now that we have that brush with all that detail built in, we can just add a layer mask to this. Make sure we've got a black foreground color selected. We've got 100% on the opacity of the brush. Um, a little trick that you can use to make sure you get close enough up to the edge is to reduce the opacity of this top layer. And now with that done, we can just again, double check. We're clicking in the layer mask. We can just brush with this detailed brush into the, uh, into the layer mask and reveal the trees from the original layer beneath the sky. And as we do this, you can see all that detail coming back. Now you'll notice that we're not going right up to the very, very edge, because if we do, then the chances of us not overlaying the brush on top of the exact original trees that we selected it from, um, that's going to be quite high. So, you know, give yourself a little bit of a buffer. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming if you're going to be swapping skies like this, then you're going to be uh, not too necessarily <laughs> worried about just shifting that horizon a little bit south. Um, but yeah, when, once you've done that, you can turn the opacity back up to 100%. Let's have a zoom in now and have a look at this. We can see that detail, absolutely incredible detail masked in with the, the shape from the original trees now against that new sky. So if you did want to be true to the original horizon, here's a little, a little extra step you can do. Let's delete this and let's hide this. Now what you can actually do if you really want is create your brush based on the entire horizon. So I'm just going to select the entire horizon there. Going to copy that, load a new image again. Now I'm going to turn that black and white. And now again with a levels adjustment, we'll just increase that contrast, make sure the grays disappear basically. Um, so that we're just left with the silhouette. 
Now we can flatten the image, right click in here, click flatten image, rectangular marquee tool. Um, actually, do you know what? One extra step, we can just grab a black brush and just fill in this gap underneath here. Uh, okay, so now we can go back to the rectangular marquee tool, select the whole image, define brush preset. Let's call this full width horizon trees. And now if we go back over here, deselect that, let's re-enable this layer, add the layer mask to that. Black is still selected. And now this is where the one click stuff comes in. We can basically just do this entire process with one click like so. And there we have it. That's now actually being true to the shape of the original horizon, albeit a little bit lower than the original horizon, but that is how it's done. Now I did talk about two scenarios in which this is incredibly useful. The first being this whole situation where we're uh, brushing into a layer mask. The second scenario is when we're cloning along detailed edges. So let me bring up a different image to uh, demonstrate this. And also we'll show you a, a really good reason why um, it's going to be helpful to build up this library of various different um, different edges and different brushes uh, because you can use them not just in the original image that you created them from. Uh, so let's look at this scenario. Now assume that we want to clone this tree or this couple of trees off of the horizon here. Now it's probably going to be too big a job for the spot healing brush tool. Let's quickly test that. So, um, I mean, I already know this isn't going to look great. There we go. It's, it's obviously having problems figuring out what should go where. I'm not going to waste your time with the other techniques that don't work, but rest assured, this is actually a pretty tricky job. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this background layer so that we're not affecting the original background. Um, the, the best way to actually get somewhere close is actually with the um, content aware fill. So the way that we use that is we're going to draw a selection around the bit that we want to uh, get rid of. Now from here we right click and choose content aware fill. Now as you can see over here in the preview, it's done the same thing as what the spot healing brush tool did. It's put the, you know, it's, it's replaced this section with the canola from the field underneath. So the way that we get away from that is to essentially remove just with the brush here we're going to remove all of the canola from this green overlay so we can use that just by brushing there uh, because what this green overlay is depicting is the part of the image which photoshop is going to replace this section with so if we haven't got any canola in there then it's not going to replace this section with any canola and we can see over here that does look a lot better now when we click OK and then zoom in on this though, we're going to see the problem. And that is the fact that it's just a straight line with no detail. So what we can do here, um, well, I mean, there's a few, a few different approaches using this brush that we could, uh, that we could take, but I'm just going to show you a really quick one first. Uh, and then you can take this idea and run with it. So selecting the clone stamp tool now, I'm going to right click and then go down and grab this. Uh, let's go the full width horizon trees brush and let's reduce the size of it so that it is somewhere around the width. Well, actually, there's probably going to be a bit too much detail if we uh, go the full width of this line that we're going to be cloning. So let's let's stick with it here. Um, and Okay, let's sample from down here. Come up here and click once. And we can see it's put a bit of detail back in there. Very, very nicely indeed. Uh, maybe we need this to be a little bit smaller actually. And if, if you want things to be on a slightly different angle, you know, like here we're going straight directly across, whereas it needs to sort of tilt down a little bit. We come to brush settings um, where is it? And it's the shape, brush tip shape. You can actually rotate it a little bit here. 
So just a few degrees. We can now sample from here and then just start cloning that edge. And this is a little bit more bumpy than I would probably want it to be. Um, you know, just due to the nature of the uh, the bit that, you know, the, the original tree horizon that we sampled. But, you know, as you can see, that is, is so much better than just that straight line going straight across. Now, one other thing that I want to show you directly relating to this is that you, know, you may notice just here there's a bit of weirdness going on, uh, some slightly repeating patterns just where I've cloned and then cloned and cloned, uh, you know, sampling two or three times. And yeah, it just looks a bit funny there. So what we can do now, because we did this on a background copy, we can just add a layer mask to this, go back to our brush tool, reduce the size of this brush. We can now actually use this to, to blend in the cloned layer with the original foreground from here. So as I do that, you'll just notice that this bit in the middle here, which you know has got that repeating pattern on it, just disappears when I mask it out there. So you can use that to just blend your clone in. So this is some pretty powerful stuff, but obviously it's not all that's going to go into making some great images in Photoshop. So check out this next video where we're going to look at how to make your landscapes pop in Photoshop.